everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Two wins in a row. Say it with me, it is what it is. We're, we're, we're up and we're down, we're hot and we're cold, we're in and we're out, we're yes and we're no. Katy Perry, look it up. I demand it. Um, I think we'll, I think we'll Pandora's box early. Pandora's box, one of those interesting items. You know, you, you, it's, it's dynamic. I, I like dynamic items in Isaac, where you get to choose. Hey, like, you, you almost look at it from, like, an economic perspective. You know, it's, we know it's worth an item in two floors, but, you know, how much do we expect tarot cloth to be worth over the next two floors? Probably less than an item, but what if we keep it going past that? You know what I mean? What if we keep it going... Um, you know, for five floors, is it worth an item at that point? Then again, now that I think about it, with Pandora's box giving us two spirit hearts, all we need is like one Hierophant card for it to be nullified by Tarot Cloth, which is not Tarot Cloth, it's called Deck of Cards. Anyway, hey, it doesn't matter, okay? Hope y'all are doing well. I'm doing very well here on this, uh, what is a Friday afternoon, very small Isaac Backlog. Feel like this video is pretty much guaranteed to come out on Sunday, so I hope you hope you had a great weekend. First weekend in December, simply having a wonderful Christmas time. You do not have my word on this. Ah! You don't have my word on this, okay? But you you have my my plan, bro. Come on, dude. Just like come on. My, my plan is, I, I meant to do a tier list of both the 12 Days of Christmas and the tier list of Christmas songs. My plan is still to get that done. I don't know if it'll be both or simply one of the two. You gotta be careful with DMCA what it is. You know, it, even technically you're not supposed to really sing the songs like simply having a wonderful Christmas time and etc, etc. So... I mean, see, I'm not too worried that the algorithms are going to catch up to the fact that I'm uh, singing the song because I, I think that, if anything, my pitch is so perfect that the algorithm couldn't detect it. It's like I build in a, uh, a cipher, a pitch cipher. No computer can detect me. By the way, we're not going to stick with Crooked Penny, but I really do think that it's worth the attempt for Crooked Penny to potentially grant us, uh, like, two free shop items along with a bunch of consumables. If it fails on us three times, it will have obviously not been worth it, but... You know, I think I think it's worth the gamble, at least. I'm also happy to have a speed upgrade here for certain. Because we could have used our, um... Oh, that's nice. We could have used our bombs to get a reroll on... Crooked Penny, and also we could have used the charges that we're getting right now to get a little closer to uh, more cards, which, you know, you, you don't necessarily expect them to tilt things too much in your favor, but they're, they're worth more than nothing for certain. A golden bomb, though, is, is of staggering value and completely nullifies everything I just said, so let's move on here. I, I have a lot of plans for videos, but, you know, it, time is... It's, it's always at a premium, but it's at a, a very, very big premium right now. <laughs> I think that that's also very understandable, but, you know, you, you understand it. Um, you know, the, the baby. And then also, you, you know, everything else, really. You know, it, 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 people are busy right now. Except I, I, I know I, I'm, I'm not complaining, okay? I, I want to be very clear that I'm not complaining on this. Um... Because I, I got it pretty easy, right? But I am always amazed that sometimes, like... You know, like, I follow some, some industry folks on Twitter. And I would never discourage someone from taking as much vacation time as they're able and, and comfortable to take, right? But, like, December 1st rolls around. Or, like, the more accurately, the Monday after American Thanksgiving rolls around. Let's go. And, uh... You, you'll see some people... Post like, all right, that's my last work day of 2020. See you guys in January. And you're like, you have a month of vacation? Again, don't get me wrong. It's kind of sick. I'm just, I'm just studying it. But also, like, how? 
Okay, well, you know, it, it hurts, but at least we did get the battery. I, Because I've, I've said this before, and sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. I want to be clear. If you get... Mm, it's probably good enough. Oh, let's go. If you get the chance to take that much vacation, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, I'm rooting for you. I'm not like, no, go back to your cubicle. I'm happy you get to spend more time, you know, with your family, especially during the holiday season. Uh, or, or by yourself or whatever you want to do, you know? That's what it's there for. But I've long held the hypothesis that, like, in the average 12-month uh, work year, year, I guess, is just a better word for that. They already had a word for that. It's just called a year. Um, there's really only, like, seven months where th things get done. American Thanksgiving through to New Year's is a total wash. Even in Canada, like in December, people... Because you remember, like, when you used to be in, like, elementary school, right? You know, you you go to school in November. In December, you're making Christmas cookies and stuff like that. And, you know, you're watching Alistair Sims, A Christmas Carol, and, you know, etc., etc., etc. So, like, I, I get it. The last week of November through to, the, like, the first week of January is pretty much just a... It's just a wash. Fair enough, right? And then... I think, like, February to May is pretty smooth. I mean, there's a lot... I, I think that more than 50% of the North American work year gets completed in the, the four months from the start of February to the end of May. Technically not a full four months because of uh, February's truncated length, but you get what I'm saying. And then, like, starting in June, productivity falls a lot. Um, you know, people start taking staggered summer vacations, so... Like, June to August is kind of, like, till the end of August is kind of a wash. Let, let's say, like, June 1st until Labor Day. Not a wash, but, like, diminished capacity. And then, you know, say from Labor Day until American Thanksgiving, stuff gets done. So, I, I really, like, I think if you run the numbers, there's about... I'm gonna say 17 work days in the, in the calendar. <laughs> Over the course of the average year, I'm, I'm thinking there's about 17 work days. And again, I can't stress enough that I think that owns. I'm not trying to shame anybody for their for the 17 work day year. I'm merely, I'm trying to say, like sometimes, like occasionally, I have genuinely. It doesn't come up very often, but occasionally, I have, I have urgent stuff that I have to get handled either on Twitch or YouTube. Like that time on YouTube. Um, that I got a false copyright strike from the Entertainment One Corporation. It, they sorted it out in a day, so it's like water under the bridge. But it it was also them. I'm not locked in here with you, by the way. You're locked in here with me. So I'm gonna, you know, just keep acknowledging that it was them. Um, hold on. Do we not get a deal with the devil because of the room? Then what does this do? It gives us a deal with the devil. Where do we pop out of? <laughs> I'm willing to go a little deeper on this. I'm not, I'm not sweating it, okay? Yahoo? Not yet, not yet. Anyway, I needed something done urgently. Um, and it got done urgently. Thank God that that was in the middle of May. My God, if that had happened like December 10th, I might have been... I might have been stuck forever. You never know. It would. We'll get back to you on St. Patrick's Day. I, I, tears up? It is a tears up. Okay, well, you just earned yourself one more play. And actually, we should have taken this earlier, but... Come on, man. Let's go. That's that's why we should have taken Gimpy earlier, obviously. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm not going any further. I am freaking leaving. I'm freaking leaving. The Wolf of Wall Street. Anyway, um, take me out of here. I would like to get some spirit heart so I don't die. Be my little baby. I don't know what I'm talking about. Long story short, God help you if you need urgent help um, in the month of December. Or, like, I think even early December, you can get away with some urgent help if you need it. But if you need urgent help in the first week of January, like sometime, if, if you have a, an insane problem that needs a, a solution from a corporation on January 2nd, you, you're toasted. I hate to say it, but you're toasted. You might as well just uh, cancel Christmas for next year. Justice, why not? 
Why not? Anyway, how am I doing? I'm doing well, uh, thank you for asking. It's been another uh, busy week, but a good week. Did some fun sponsor stuff. Uh, so we, we uh, me and Dan and Apollo, Dan and Apollo and I. <laughs> Why won't anybody invite me to their birthday party? Dan, Apollo, and I um, got sponsored to play the new Worms Battle Royale. Now, I mentioned that we got sponsored so that, you know, I, I acknowledge that you can't trust anything I'm about to say because I'm compromised, right? Like, I've been, I've been bought and paid for. I'm in Team 17's pocket. However... I was, so I, like, I had played Worms Rumble, which is the new Worms Battle Royale. It's free, by the way, on PlayStation Plus if you got it. Um, it's it's not a traditional Worms game in the sense that it's not uh, turn-based. It is, however, um, you know, it has the Worms IP and the Worms aesthetic, but it's it's more like uh, the showdown effect, you know, Paradox's 2013 uh, side-scroller combat game that really, in my opinion, didn't get the credit that it deserved. Uh, or sold that, or something like that. You know, like, you can run and soul that. Soul that. What, I, I forget the... I, so, I don't know. If I This is a bit, little bit problematic because it's an ancient viral video. But you know the video that's like, you know... You don't need to come and confess. We're looking for you. We're gonna find you. I've had that, but, like, as a really thick, like, country music version in my head for maybe a month and a half. And I, I don't even think it's like a real song that exists. It's just like an SCP my brain came up with. So sometimes I'll just be like making coffee in the morning. And my brain will be like, You don't need to come and confess. We're looking for you. We're gonna find you. We're gonna find you. <laughs> so you can run and tell that. And you, you get the idea. Um, and then we won't take it any further than that. But suffice it to say, is is a heck of an earworm. Like, I can hear it so clearly. The fact that my brain constructed it, you know, without my permission is very unnerving. It's the sneer. You don't need to come and confess. We're looking for you. <laughs> Sorry. See, the, the only reason I'm able to recreate it so well is because, you know, it, it's so visceral in my head. You don't need to come and confess. Anyway. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Worms Rumble, I had an amazing time playing it. Again, please keep in mind when I say that, that I was sponsored to, uh, not to say it, but I was sponsored to play it. So if you, uh... Oh, thank you. You know, if, if, if you want to take it that way, you could consider this, like, some, some free publicity for the game after the fact, but, uh, genuinely, I had a great time. And only part of the great time was that we had double-digit wins over the course of two hours, which is, like, something you would never expect from a Battle Royale. In 120 minutes to pick up 10 wins is pretty good. I did also have a 10-kill game. I'm telling you, dude, three dimensions, I'm like, my ELO is, like, 700. Not good. No offense if you're a 700 ELO chess player, but, like, you've probably been playing for, like, a month, and you're like, you know, don't offend me, I'm trying. No, you, get, you can get there, it just takes practice. In 2D games, I honestly think I have like an 1150 to 1250 ELO. You know, it's still not amazing, but, you know, good enough to at least hold my own. Why can't I get that out of my head, man? You don't need to come and confess. I hate it. But also, on the other hand, <laughs> I have never loved anything more. Um, well, except my wife and daughter, but regardless. It's funny how earworms get stuck in your head. Bad trip is okay. We can we can hold it. It reminds me like um like sometimes your brain it's a very powerful computer, but it gets so. Tomo, you want to leave? You want to leave, my man? Okay, there you go. It's a very powerful computer, but sometimes it like does operations that you uh, don't support, right? And then they get locked in there forever. Like, there's this song, uh, Get Out The Way, by The Vines, not the Ludacris song. It goes, Get Out The Way! Get Out Of The Way! And then there's another song, um, that I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's by a Canadian band called Gob. 
and it goes like, I want to jump in a lake, sunshine down on a beach in the summer. And then, like, for some reason, I must have been, like, feverish home from school one day in, like, eighth grade. Because now, like, every time I, I think of either of those songs, my brain mashes them together as, like, get out the way, get out of the way, sunshine down on a beach in the summer. And it, forever, they, they're linked like that. And it's, uh... I mean, it's not necessarily bad, but it's just one of those things that's like... Come on, brain, why are you doing... Why, why are you incepting me with with false uh, memories? It's, I mean, it's, I guess it's not really a false memory. It's more like, you know, a, a real mashup that my brain's concocted, but still, like... Could, you couldn't just remember things as they were, right? You couldn't just keep two separate entries. Instead, like, somehow... You know, uh, it's like in a computer, you know, we've accidentally, um, you know, assigned some data to a memory address that's already occupied, but we didn't, you know, clear it properly, and all of a sudden, you're like, what the heck? My bank account says that I have negative 32 million dollars in it? Real time, this is an honest question. Again, I've established many times, I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to the financial markets. Um, doing, doing pretty well in the stonks uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks, but I, don't, I think that's like a rising tide carries all ships, you know? The market itself is just kind of out of control. Um, which you can tell because when you walk outside, you know, uh, you're like, wow, all these businesses are clearly booming. Um, and, oh, so many people at the mall. Regardless. Yeah, okay, oh, it's priced in. Sorry, sorry, moving on. I'm trying to delete it. Um, what was it? Oh, I, 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 here's an I, honest question. Do you think, if you had zero dollars in your bank account, that's bad. Everybody would agree. I know that you're probably like, you know, maybe you have student loans or something like that. And you're like, I would kill for zero dollars in my bank account. You shouldn't commit murder for... You know, almost any reason. You could probably come up with some, but let's not get into that. Um, you know, this is what we have the court system for. Or alternatively, social media. Um, but just just work with me on this one, okay? Like, obviously, look, a net worth of zero is not necessarily terrible, depending on your age. You know? Or the, a lot, uh, so many people have a net worth of, of less than zero, i.e. just about everybody in the city of Vancouver who has a mortgage. Um, but regardless, if we're, if we're moving on here, can I move on? Thank you. Bank account, zero dollars, not a good position for you to be in. Most people would probably agree, I think. However, hear me out here. If you had a bank account of like negative 10 million dollars, wouldn't that actually be like one of the most powerful positions you could be in? Because like, I... I feel like there's something freeing about being extremely screwed, if that makes sense. I think Tomo wants back in here. One sec. <laughs> Hello, Tomo. Welcome. Now, I, I, I mean, you would, would you rather have $100 million in the positive direction or $100 million in the negative direction? You'd probably rather have $100 million in the positive direction, right? But, if you, if you gave me the choice between being $10,000 in debt or $10 million in debt, I actually think being $10 million in debt... Well, I don't know. It's, I think I'm giving horrible financial advice because I'm like, I think you can get out of $10,000 in debt. <laughs> you know, hopefully there's, there's services or family that you could lean on and, and find a way to make it back from that. Would I rather be like... Ten million dollars in debt or a hundred million dollars in debt? There you go. That's where I'm like, dude, give me the hundred million. Feel like if I was ten million dollars in debt, I would be miserable. If I was a hundred million dollars in debt, I would be the freest man on the planet. Because I would be like, what are you gonna do? You know, I I, I have like one uh, zero point zero fifth of that in assets. You're going to repossess all my assets and take like a 99.995% loss? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so, you know, instead it's like, in some way, if somebody owes you that much money, you control them, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not suggesting 
that you'd try to get a hundred million dollars into debt. In fact, you know, I mean, honestly, if somebody lets you get a hundred million dollars into debt, that's almost on them. Like, if one of my friends came to me and was like, hey, can I borrow like 250 bucks? I'd be like, no. But like, hypothetically, let's play this out. Um, you know, what if I said yes? Then they came to me and were like, hey, sorry, that 250, like it wasn't enough. I'm a little short on rent. I'm going to need to borrow like a thousand. I'd be like, okay. And then if they were like, okay, I need to borrow 900 and <laughs> I need to borrow 99 million dollars. I would be like, you know what? That's where the gravy train ends, brother. I will admit, I don't think I, I would not be a good friend to I let me put it this way. If a close friend came to me and they had a good reason for needing the money. And it wasn't an exorbitant sum. Because the, the thing I've always heard about loaning money to friends and family is you should just accept that it's gone as soon as you give it to them or don't give it to them. So I, I've never really been asked um, in the first place, but I, I would be hesitant for sure. And I would probably take offense to the question. But if, if there was a compelling case, you know, like, hey, you know, we've been friends for a long time. I lost my job due to COVID, um, but the prospects are looking up in like February, but I'm short on rent. I would be like, yeah, here's, you know, and th I want to be clear to the comments. This is friends, <laughs> friends only. <laughs> I might be like, yeah, here's a month's worth of rent. And, you know, let me know if there's any other way I can help. Um, if they were like, ah, you know, because I've seen posts on Reddit that were like, you know, uh, I YOLO'd a stock that the, that social media told me to YOLO and then it went down and I can't make my rent payment. And I'm like, you YOLO'd your rent money? It was all, that, that post also, it, it aggravated me a lot. Because it was like a slow motion, it was like uncut gems. The guy YOLO'd $2,000 on a stock that went down. And then he was like, hey, I need to borrow two grand for a week, but I'll pay you back 2500 after that. And I was like, man, you, you're really like offering to take a 25% interest loan? I'm not trying to say you should try to screw over your friend, but like maybe start at like 5% <laughs> within offering to just get bent over. But anyway, like this is it's neither here nor there, okay? If there's a good reason for it, I can understand it. But I, I definitely would resent being asked. Unless it was for, you know, a, a very good and like, hey, I did almost everything right, but things changed. You know, that that's that you can definitely understand that. I remember in high school, um, I was I was friends with a, a guy who's very, very smart. Um, haven't spoken to him, you know, in 10 years, but... Uh, He's, he's very smart, and he, he was, like, doing things, not not on, like, major, you know, big money moves, but he, he was, like, invested in the stock market as a 16-year-old, which obviously, you know, you would think, like, he came from a family of means. That wasn't really the case. He, he was doing just, like, small plays and, and digging himself out of, uh, you know, the situation that he was in. But I remember, like, he was doing pretty well, and another one of our friends was like, hey, can I borrow $500? Which is, like, an an incredibly audacious ask <laughs> for uh i'm not I, I i took the pills i took the risk to get these tiers upgrades i'm not taking the d4 okay it's just such an audacious ask for like a 17 year old is to be like hey can i borrow 500 dollars?" and then my friend was like what do you need it for and he said like a watch <laughs> and he was like no and the guy was like oh man Anyway, that's that's my story there. I, there. There's something there's something scary about debt, of course. What I'm trying to get at, though, is that I think there is a level where, like, isn't it like also powerful? Like, if you just go f fully to the opposite extreme, like when Kanye West was like, "Hey, I'm a hundred million dollars in debt," and people were like, "Wow, I'm richer than Kanye." I'm like, "Well, you want to trade places with him?" I think, you know, if you have five grand in your savings account, 
I would rather be Kanye West with four hundred million dollars in debt. Because if so, if you're four hundred million million dollars in debt, don't you own the bank? At that point, like the bank would be like, "Excuse me, Mr. Kanye, sir, we'd really like to get the service payment for our uh, the interest on the debt." I'll be like, "Don't bother me on Fridays. You'll have it on Tuesday." Okay, thank you, sir. I don't know if that's how it works. Like, I, <laughs> again, this is, the, I'm, I'm not trying to make a definitive statement like this is what it's like. I'm actually asking questions. Like, because, cause, and I know that, ju you know, just asking questions is actually, like, potentially problematic. But I don't even mean it in that context. Like, I'm just trying to figure it out. But I'm genuinely just dumb and just trying to understand. But, like, when people are like, oh, you know, other countries own, like, 40% of the U.S. national debt. I'm like, isn't that... I don't want to say it's good for America, because I, again, it's kind of a, that's a definitive statement to make. But at some point, if you have taken $400 million of another country's money, or let's say $400 billion, I guess, at this point, um, don't you kind of own them? Like, don't they have to stay on your good side? Because what are they going to do? Be like, pay us back immediately? And you'd be like... No, I don't. Uh, yeah, can you just do that? I don't. Look, I don't understand all this stuff. All right, <laughs> I'm just saying. There's smart people that watch these videos, and I'm I'm hoping that some of those smart people will help get me out of the hole that I've gotten myself in here. I would very much appreciate it. Um, I don't think I'm in a hole. I think I'm I'm just I'm just having a conversation. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like I I think there. If, if I owed a friend a hundred bucks, I could live my life. If I owned a friend $25,000, I would never sleep again until it was paid off. I, I, because I couldn't. I would, I would just be, I would be so rife with anxiety. If I owned, if I owed a friend a comical amount of money, like, you know, a hundred million dollars, I would just be like, I honestly think that might be the, the best I ever slept in my entire life. Because I would be like, that guy cannot collect. <laughs> or he will destroy the means to collect. I don't know. Anyway. I don't, don't give me, because I know that NL, you're giving very f financially irresponsible advice. You're not going to go to the bank and be like, give me a $100 million line of credit. It's not, it's not how it works, right? And again, if that is how it works... You have a responsibility to take the money from the bank and then move to the Cayman Islands. They would do it to you, okay? I'm not advocating getting into a reckless and irresponsible amount of debt. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm asking a question. Would you rather be $50,000 in debt or $500 million in debt? I think $500 million in debt is kind of powerful. Just to have gotten to that point in the first place kind of demonstrates, you know, some level of acumen, I think. All right, so this run, it is potentially, I mean, if we're going to if we're going to do this, let's do this. This run has some potential degree of spice associated with it now. It's not necessarily a guaranteed win. Um I wouldn't necessarily call it a a likely loss. I, I certainly would not go that far. Anyway, apart from that, how am I doing? Well, thank you. Um, not, re not really much going on in the anecdote department. Just just chilling. That's the other thing about December is it's kind of like, you know, especially this December is kind of like the most anecdote dry month, right? You know, nobody's... People aren't doing that much. I, I was going to say games aren't really coming out, but it's not really true. Like... Uh, I mean, Cyberpunk is probably one of the biggest releases of, like, the last 10 years. Um, and that's coming out in, like, a, a week. I probably am not going to play it. Uh, at least not at launch, and probably, like, never on stream. And again, it's, it's not... I'm not being contrarian. If you, if you like the game, that's great. I'm not like... I'm, am I the only person that doesn't... No, but I, I've had enough experience with, like, long, sprawling, ambitious open world games on, on my stream that I'm like, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of done with them. The, no review could come out. The, the only way 
a review could come out for Cyberpunk that made me uh, feel the FOMO and want to buy it. This is for real. It would be if the review was like, hey, first off, it's the best game ever made. Secondly, there's a way to play the game, uh, and I'm not talking about speedruns, but there's a way to play the game where you can see the majority of the story and it's worth experiencing in under six hours. If there was like some kind of turbo mode where they're like, hey, for, for people who are sick of uh, 50 hour experiences, here's a, you know, like a truncated version. I might, I might consider it if it was also the best game ever made. <laughs> and it's a testament to CD Projekt Red, I think, that that's... I mean, they probably don't have the mode that I'm asking for, but I, I do fully expect when reviews come out that it will be in, like, the, the low to high nines on average. It's just an expectation. I haven't actually, obviously, played it for myself, um, but... So yeah, I mean, if you're if you're hyped for Cyberpunk, I I have not felt video game hype in a long time. I think we do want Book of Shadows here, um, and that that's I honestly think mostly a consequence of two things: working in the industry uh, and then getting older and having been there before. I guess you know, like I know that maybe sounds dismissive. I'm not trying to say like if you're buying into the hype, you're wrong. Hype can be fun, especially when the game is great. Like I remember. One of the first games I bought into the hype for in a big way. Original uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Xbox. Never played a Bioware game before. But uh, an immersive RPG set in the Star Wars universe. And then the reviews came out and it got like a 93 from official Xbox magazine. And you're like, whoa, that's like a great score. I remember I went to EB the electronics boutique to uh to pre-order and i was like i think i went the day before it came out and i was oh i screwed up my deal with the devil chance and i was like hey do you guys have knights of the old republic in yet and the guy was like nah we don't uh like it comes out tomorrow but if you want it you better pre-order it and i was like oh there are a lot of people interested in and in, in it and he just went oh yeah <laughs> anyway and then, like, I was, all my friends on ICQ bought into the hype as well, you know? We were all talking about it as we were playing. Bastila, no! You, you, you get the idea. It was a lot of fun. But, uh, just not in that, uh, different, different place in your life, you know? Different games will hit you differently at different points in your life. Like, I imagine... You know, if, if, and this is maybe not the right time for it because so many people are working from home right now. But your opinion on mobile games probably is influenced at least a little bit by the amount of times you find yourself in public transit, right? Or, or maybe like being driven by someone, if that makes sense. Like maybe, you know, you carpool, but your coworker drives or something. I imagine, I, I bet if you did like a, a census, I bet. The most... I, let me put it this way. I bet if you took an, an enormous sample size, because I think you might need it. And this is not how science works, by the way. You don't get to say, like, I bet. But because I'm not a scientist, I get to do whatever I want. Ha 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 ha. Suck on that, Isaac Newton. Um, but anyway, what I'm saying is... <laughs> um, I would not be surprised. My... my not my null hypothesis. My, my inverted null hypothesis is that if you surveyed uh, 100,000 people who drive to work and 100,000 people who took the bus or the subway, I bet you would find a statistically significant uh, increase in mobile game interest. Not just playing, but interest amongst the, the people that commute. Because, you know, your circumstances kind of dictate... Uh, your, uh, you, you know, what, what you, what your hobbies are and what you get excited for. In the same way, I bet if you were to do a survey, I mean, it's kind of busted for Cyberpunk, right? Because the game's been, you know, announced for eight years, um, at this point. We will take it. Might not apply right now, but we will take it. But, uh, you know, if you were to take a survey and be like, who's most excited for Cyberpunk? If, if you split the demographics and you were like, okay, people in their 30s with uh, a child under the age of 10, I think that you would find that the interest in that demographic 
might be, and this is a might, but it might be somewhat lower than, you know, people who maybe have a little bit more. And I get, by the way, that it's offensive, like if you're in your mid-twenties and you don't have a kid, you're like, ah, oh, I'm just, uh, screw me, I guess. He thinks I'm not working hard because uh, I'm ten years younger and I don't have a child. Look, I've, I've straddled both sides of this line, including very recently. I only recently crossed from, from one demo into the other. It is a big time difference. Like, I don't know if you're, like, drop shipping on Amazon or whatever. Like, I get it. You're, like, hustle, rise, and grind. But, like, you know, it's a little different. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. It's a parent thing. I'm just, I'm not, all I'm saying is that I do, I find myself getting annoyed sometimes because people will be like, oh, NL is just trying to be needlessly contrarian. We get it. You're not like other gamers. You don't need cyberpunk because you're like, oh, I'm just going to play Slay the Spire instead. But like, that's kind of like, not, games aren't like a one size fits all sort of thing, you know? Most of them aren't at least. And in fact, games that are one size fits all tend to like, not fit that well, you know? Like, when I think of one-size-fits-all games, I think of, like, Far Cry 5, where I'm like, I mean, it's like, it, it fits, but, like, I don't know if I would like to be seen wearing it. Just in general, like, it, here's what I do like, though, and, and here's where I feel somewhat hypocritical, I guess, about Cyberpunk. I do love the, the aesthetic, and there's not that many... Uh, like super big budget AAA video games that that take place in a cyberpunk world, like I this the setting of something like Deus Ex is so cool. I'm I'm happy to see that get some extra attention. Even though cyberpunk, the sentiment is high for cyberpunk type environments or or settings, I guess. Um, you still don't see the, too many projects of, of this size and scope come out, right? I think, I guess. So I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see where it goes. I think it's going to be great, and I think it's going to be beloved. But I also think that I will probably get annoyed by people being like, When are you going to play Cyberpunk? But that's a me problem, honestly. That's not a you problem. What am I going to do instead? Well, play Rocket League. <laughs> 60-hour video game, Drake doing the shaking head motion. 1,200 matches of Rocket League over the exact same time frame, Drake doing a nod. But it is like, it, you know, that's how that goes. You know, if I was to ask you, like, hey, do you want to eat a whole bag of potato chips? You would be like, that's gross. No. But if I put the bag of potato chips down in front of you, I bet if I came back in three hours, that thing would be totally gone. You don't, you, you know, it's easier to... It's easier to do little buy-ins. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Instead of being like, I'm gonna eat a whole bag of chips, you're like, well, I could eat another handful. I could eat another handful. I could just eat another handful here. I just quickly eat another handful. I could just... Well, okay, now the bag's like, it's about half done. So I'm not gonna eat anymore. I could have like another handful. Like who cares if I go 60-40, right? I could still have 40% like tomorrow or in a few days or, you know. Oh, but now like, oh, I'd say we're at like 30%. I might as well just finish it now. You know, I, I know how it goes. I've lived that life. Sorry, I, I took some damage there. I was not prepared for the, uh, the decay in our speed. Anyway, all this is to say, I hope with me not playing Cyberpunk, it, it might be hard to find a streamer or YouTuber playing it, because I'm just not sure that it's going to be that popular. Um, but I, I hope you find someone. I'm sure there's probably a few people that are going to, like, if they've heard of it, I don't know, it's kind of like a little known game, but I'm sure if people have heard of it, they might give it a try. I don't know, is anybody planning on, on streaming Cyberpunk? Not that I've heard of. Oh, oh, everybody is? Okay. I'll be out here playing Dead by Daylight on Twitch. <laughs> 2016's hottest hide-and-seek game. All right. So we did manage to take this one through. Very exciting. Easy win that recently got a little bit more spicy, but... 
happy to make it work regardless. This takes us up to three wins. In a row. And not three wins total. That would be an embarrassment. Three wins in a row. If I could win like that, I would do anything just to win one run in your shoes. You know that? Three doors down. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Also, the great deal. Of course, subscribe. You want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!